Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at the latest version of Zorin OS. This is a Linux distro created with Windows users in mind. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, to get Zorin OS we need to go to the Zorin OS website here we are, and to click on download Zorin OS. And on the download page, we discover there are four versions of Zorin OS. At the top, we have Zorin OS 15 Ultimate, which is a paid product. It costs 39 euros, which is about a 35 pounds or 44 dollars. And we will look at this towards the end of the video. But if we scroll down, we discover Zorin OS 15 Core, which is free to download. We're going to download and install that in a second. And if we go further down, we find a Zorin OS Lite for less powerful computers and a Zorin OS Education. And you might notice that the Education versions and the Lite versions are still in version 12.4, whereas the uh, Core and Ultimate versions are in version 15. And it's worth noting that like Microsoft with Windows, they've missed some numbers out and never was a Zorin OS 13 or 14. So let's download a Zorin OS 15 Core and uh, Click on free download there and skip to a download. We'll skip the newsletter for now. It'll take us out to SourceForge where it'll find us the file. And there we are, we will save the file. And this is a, about a 2.2 gigabyte download. So we'll uh, dissolve on through to the next stage of the process. And with the download completed, we've got an ISO file sitting here in the folder in which we downloaded the file. So what we need to do is to write that to a USB drive which will be bootable so we can either try out or install Zorin OS. And to do that, I'm going to use a piece of software called a Belayda Etcher, which is down there, which is the software that Zorin OS recommends you use. And to get this software, you can get it from the web if you've not got it. Go to a belayda.io forward slash Etcher, as you can see, and you can download the software. Although if you wanted to, you could also use software like Rufus to achieve the same thing. Anyway, we'll select the image which is uh, there, the thing we've just downloaded. And you'll see I've put a USB drive into the computer. We'll just check we've got the right one there, which is a Corsair 16 gigabyte drive. It doesn't have to be that big. You need to use a drive at least four gigabytes in size for most versions of Zorin OS or eight gigabytes in size for Zorin OS Ultimate. So that's okay. So we'll just click on the flash and it'll start to create our bootable USB drive. We'll tell Windows it's okay and it'll now take a while, so I'll speed through to the end of the process. And there we are, it's finished. We now have a bootable Zorin OS USB drive. Right, to try out or install Zorin OS, we need to close down our computer, make sure our USB drive is inserted, and start the computer up again. And you might also need to go into your BIOS to set the computer to boot from a USB drive. And I've covered the details of that in my recent video on PC BIOS settings. So with the computer booted from a USB drive, we'll get to this menu. And I'll just move it down so we don't do an automatic boot there. And as you can see, we've got various options. The first one is to try or install Zorin OS. There's then another very nice option here, which is to try or install Zorin OS with modern NVIDIA graphics drivers. Because if your computer has got an NVIDIA graphics card, for example, the computer here has got an NVIDIA GT1030 graphics card, then normally when you install the Linux distro, you have to install your own NVIDIA graphics driver. So it's great to see there's an option where you don't have to do that. That's really good. And also we've got an option here to check our installation medium to make sure there's no errors on the drive we created and we're installing from. So the first thing I'm going to do is to run that. And uh, I imagine this will take a little bit of time, so we'll let it run through. And uh, there we are, we've finished, there are no errors. I can now press a key to reboot our system. So here we are back at the menu, and now I think we will try or install Zorin OS with modern NVIDIA graphics drivers. Clearly, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card in your system, or you're not sure, just use the, the option at the top. But I'll use this option here. And uh, here we go, and I'll speed through most of this. And uh, here we are, we now have two options to either try Zorin OS, in other words, we can boot it from a USB drive and try it out without making any changes to our computer. You may well want to try that. 
But here the option I'm going to use is to install Zorin OS on this machine. So I'll click on install Zorin OS, obviously in English. And I'll just change myself to English UK. There we are. Uh, we'll download updates while the thing is installing and we'll install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi. That seems very sensible. And here we are with a range of options. And you see the options we've got are to install Zorin OS alongside Windows, or we can erase the disk and install Zorin OS to replace everything else on the disk. And that is what I'm going to do. So I want to actually replace the operating system on this computer. This is at the test rig with Zorin OS, so nothing else will be installed. Only do this second option if you want to get rid of your existing operating system. To be absolutely clear, this will remove Windows from your computer if you're installing this on a Windows PC. There is no magic button to go back again. So I'm going to stick with that option, erase disk and install Zorin OS. I don't think I need anything else. I will now install. And do I want to do it? Yes, I do. And I'll flick through most of these time zones. It's fine. I'll put in a few details here. And there we are. In about 25 minutes in the real world, we've completed the install of a Zorin OS. So all I need to do now is to remove the USB drive and to restart the computer. So, here we are booting into Zorin OS Core 15. As you can see, there's no doubt this is Zorin OS. And I set it up so I had to enter a password on the startup. So I'll just select my username and put my password in. And here we are on the Zorin OS desktop. And the first thing I think you note, you probably noted during the install, is that Zorin is a very crisp, very clean, very professional looking operating system. And I should say this is not my first boot. I have been in once just to set things up for recording. And on that first boot, a little updater came up, asked me if we wanted to update things. I obviously did that, seems sensible. But other than that, this is exactly as you get things out of the box. And as you can see, if you're a Windows user, it's already pretty familiar. We've got down the bottom the panel, equivalent of a taskbar in Windows with various icons on that. We can, for example, uh, bring up a software installer, which is very handy, so you can graphically install software under lots of different categories. So, for example, we can install uh, the Critter painting package by just clicking install. It's nice and straightforward. Uh, we've got a file manager, which is, well, it's a file manager, as you would expect. Obviously, things are empty because this is a, a clean install. And uh, we've got the Firefox web browser as a default web browser, which again comes up as you would expect. Oh, look, there's the world's favorite website. And then down here in the left corner, if we click down here, you'll see it's like a start menu in Windows, and we go to a very Windows-like menu, where there's various accessories pre-installed. Some games are pre-installed. There's a rather nice version of Solitaire, which comes up uh, like that. Might have to see if I can do this now. No, I can't do it. Got very close, but never mind. It's not going to work. So uh, we'll come out of that. And uh, what else is here other than that? We've got a uh, graphical stuff pre-installed. We've got a uh, GIMP, the uh, GNU Image Manipulation Program, its latest version. That looks very nice. We've got down here uh, Office applications, as you would expect. LibreOffice, LibreOffice Writer, all here for us to use. And uh, we can write documents and things in that if we wanted to. And, uh, and finally down here, there's various um, sound and video tools, video player, webcam program, etc. And then we've got various uh, system tools here, as you would expect. And uh, we've also got um, various utilities. For example, here's the disk usage analyzer. And this is installed, this setup on a 120 gigabyte SSD. So you can see not a lot of space is used. It's a nice, efficient install. So there we are, that's the basis of a Zorin OS. But there's one trick here that's really important to show you, because if I go into, into a settings over there, in settings, we can change a lot of the things you would expect, but we've also got this appearance setting, which is a rather nice, let's just make it a bit neater on the screen. Now here we can change things like the theme. So for example, we can go to say a dark theme. I rather like that, it makes the menu look really cool. And you can also set the theme if you set up location settings, which I haven't, so it will change it between dark and light at a sunset and sunrise, which is a rather neat little feature. 
But the, the critical thing here is here under desktop, we can change desktops. So at the moment, we've got the standard Windows desktop, as they call it, installed, which has got the standard sort of Windows menu, little icons down here, etc. But we could go to the Windows Classic desktop. So if I click that, it takes a second to adjust itself sometimes. You can see now we've got slightly different settings. It actually shows you the names down here. The menu looks pretty, pretty similar. But we've also got here what's called the Touch desktop. And this is a really significant change. When I've clicked that, you can see that the icons have moved to the middle of the panel down there. But if I click to the Start menu, we get this. That's rather different, isn't it? We've now got a sort of Android-like sort of a desktop access, which is, I think, really cool. This is quite a nice idea. If you want to use this on, say, a, a tablet or a, a touchscreen device, that's a rather nice setup. So that's a rather nice feature of Zorin OS. You can actually select not just things like, do I want to have my home and trash icons on, on my desktop? You can actually change the layout of the desktop itself. Now, here I am back in Zorin OS, but this time I've installed Zorin OS Ultimate. This is the paid version of Zorin OS 15. And you basically get three things if you get the paid version. Firstly, you get to help out the project to keep it going by contributing some money to it. Secondly, you get a lot of installed software. We'll look at that in a second. And thirdly, you get more desktop layout choices. So if I bring those up here, you'll see we've now got six choices. We've got the uh, Windows ones we saw earlier in the Windows Classic, and we've still got that uh, lovely option when we can do that uh, touch screen thing, if we just bring that one in, and we get that wacky effect with the uh, touch stuff there. I, I do like that. We've then got down here an option called GNOME 3, so a more familiar Linux type uh, implementation. And if we use that, you'll see when we go to the menu, we get to, we get that. There's no, there's no answer to that. We've also got down here an Ubuntu option, which is not surprising because Zorin uh, OS is based upon Ubuntu on, under the surface. And so that's very uh, Linux familiar to many people. And finally, over here, we have a Mac OS option, which uh, we just flick into that. That's uh, come in there. And uh, again, when we press the icons, they will all uh, come up like that. See all of our programs, we're in lots of different screens. And in fact, we can see here going through, there is a lot more software installed on the system in the Zorin OS Ultimate when you first have finished the install. So let's uh, come out of that and go back to a, a layout I'm familiar with over there. And I'll just reset my panel to the size it was. And there we are. And let's just now take a look down at the uh, software we've got here, accessories. There's a few more things in here, but not, not massively uh, in, in there. Quite a few games in there, all sorts of games here. So uh, I'll maybe bring things up on the other side of the screen just to show you very briefly what they are. Things like, for example, a Super Tux Kart you can have playing over there. And then we've also got uh, a lot more in the graphics. Mass is more here. We've got a Blender for 3D modeling and all kinds of uh, other stuff. We've got, uh, uh, in addition to having GIMP there installed, we've also got a uh, Inkscape for structured graphics. We've got a uh, Critter for uh, Painting, fantastic piece of software. Do check out my, my Critter video. Uh, we've got here under um, internet, a couple more things, not a lot, but a couple. Uh, under office, a few more utilities for doing office type tasks. Uh, we've got under sound and video, again, masses more. We've got Audacity for audio editing. We've got the uh, um, Handbrake Transcoder, Caden Live for video editing, Kodi for media playback, Mix and various other things for audio work, etc. And then there's a few more things, I think, under a system tools and also under a utilities. And if we look at the uh, disk usage analyzer again, you'll see we've got a bit more space taken up there, but still not that much. You still haven't got that much space taken on your drive. It's still quite an efficient install. And of course, all of the software you get down here, all of this could be installed for free if you wish to by going to the appropriate places in software and installing. But the advantage of getting Zorin OS Ultimate is it's all installed for you. So there we are. We've had a quick look at the difference between Zorin OS 15 Core and Zorin OS 15 Ultimate. Zorin OS is a very nice Linux distro, and if you're a Windows user who's thinking of migrating to Linux, it's certainly a distro you should investigate. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. 
If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.